Well, Greta Gerwig's new movie, Lady Bird, has certainly gotten a lot of um, critical attention. In fact, it's the, um, it's the most reviewed movie on Rotten Tomatoes to have received a totally 100% rating from the critics, which is pretty impressive. Now, I knew from the coming attractions that it was going to be this kind of quirky uh, comedy. I must say, I had no idea it would be such a religiously interesting film. It focuses around this relationship between a young girl named Christine who calls herself Lady Bird and insists everyone else calls her that name too, and her mother, Marion. And the movie opens with the two of them in the car, and they're both in tears, having just listened together to an audio recording of uh, The Grapes of Wrath, and they're, they're crying in their deep appreciation for the story. So you can tell there's a really powerful bond between these two uh, women. But then I would say within one minute of that very affecting scene, they're arguing at such intensity that Lady Bird <laughs> simply opens the door and exits the car, the moving car, which is the best sight gag in the movie. Um, but it sums up what it'll be about, this incredibly complicated positive and negative relationship between these two women, mother and daughter. Um, we discover pretty quickly that Lady Bird is a, a very bright, uh, though typically conflicted uh, teenager. And you see a lot of the typical crises of a, of a young person's life. So uh, her first boyfriend uh, turns out to be gay. Uh, then she falls in with this kind of pretentious uh, young man who sort of manipulates her. She becomes friendly with a, a cool kid girl that she wants to impress and that friendship kind of unravels. She ends up being alienated from the girl who really is her best friend. Um, she loves her hometown and she hates her hometown. So all the typical kind of teen angst type things. Then we, we learn more about her mother, Marion, who clearly loves her daughter, but who is also <laughs> unbearable. It's also this hovering, guilt-inducing figure. So you're watching this and it's very entertaining. And you say, okay, typical teen angst, coming of age type story. But then you begin to notice, at least I begin to notice, a lot of very strong and positive religious overtones. So Lady Bird is not herself a Catholic, but yet she attends this Catholic um, high school. And we see throughout the movie um, liturgies and prayer services the kids are, are obliged to attend. And they're presented not in a, in a critical or um, sarcastic way, as you often see in, in films. They're presented positively. But the school has, has a lot of uh, priests and nuns on the faculty. There's a very sympathetic figure, an older man, a priest, who's a drama coach, and he's in a few key scenes in the movie. And it becomes clear that um, in a previous life he'd been married, had lost um, a son, and was dealing with a lot of sadness and depression. But he's presented very positively. When, when he goes off for a treatment, he's replaced by this kind of gung-ho younger priest, who up to that point had been the football coach, and who brings all this kind of 50-yard line enthusiasm to the work of the drama troupe. But again, he's presented in a very positive, sympathetic way. But by far, the most sympathetic figures are the nuns, are the sisters who um, run this high school. They are, to a person, uh, smart, funny, um, sympathetic, religiously plugged in. The really pivotal scene in the whole movie, I think, is uh, a conversation between Lady Bird and the sister, who's like the mother superior, the principal of the high school. Lady Bird had done something really terrible at this um, um, school assembly, had said something really offensive, you know. And um, a, a lesser person would simply have dismissed her. But the, the older nun uh, calls her in and she punishes her for this. But then she, she senses that Lady Bird has a lot on the ball and she talks to her about her writing and about her creativity and finding an outlet for all of her kind of intellectual and, and creative energies. It's a very positive scene where this older, wiser, religious figure um, senses a potential in this young woman. Well, Lady Bird eventually finishes high school and off she goes to New York. And that was a point of contention with her mother who wanted her to stay close to home in California. She goes to New York and she finds herself a little bit adrift. One night she, um, she drinks way too much and ends up in uh, the hospital. And while she's there in the kind of emergency room, she looks across and she sees 
this young boy, and he's got like a bandage on his eye, he's been injured. But the young boy is there with his mother. And it triggered something in Lady Bird. It triggered these powerful memories of her own mother and her relationship to her mother and her mother's, I think, deep care for her. Well, she leaves the, um, the hospital and then she realizes it's Sunday morning. And she makes her way to a church. Now, mind you, she's not a Catholic, but she's been exposed to religion and to religious practice and to uh, the liturgy and so on. She goes in and she hears this, this beautiful choir singing a, a, a classic Christian hymn. And it's very clear, this is a, a sort of epiphany moment. Something was triggered very deep in her. She exits the church and in tears decides to call her mother and she gets her answering service and she leaves this sort of message of, of apology. And that's where the movie comes to a close. And it's kind of a, a small thing, but I think it's fair to say it's one of those moments of grace when she realized the power of the religious to trigger um, a change. Well, anyway, this was in my mind as I watched the movie, and then afterwards I read a remarkable interview with Greta Gerwig, the, um, the director of the film. And it's, it's largely, as you probably guessed, you know, autobiographical, this movie. She talked about something she learned while attending Catholic high school as a young woman, that God can take whatever you have and use it. So here's this kid, Lady Bird, bright, creative, talented, deeply conflicted, all kinds of personal problems, a, a bit of a mess in some ways. But God can take whatever we've got and use it. Then she said that she was always intrigued by this um, reflection. What were the saints like when they were teenagers? So we think of the great saints, you know, in the stained glass windows and these, these completely realized figures in full spiritual and psychological maturity. But, I mean, let's face it, Augustine was once a teenager, Ignatius of Loyola was once a teenager, Thomas Aquinas was once a teenager, St. Paul was a teenager. What were they like when they were 16 and undoubtedly conflicted and full of all sorts of problems? Well, God reached out in a moment of grace and used what they had and started them on a path that eventually led to this magnificent life that we see. And I thought, boy, that's what this movie really is about, isn't it? It's about, let's say, a saint someday, but as a teenager. And what was the moment of grace that allowed her to start on the path that God wanted her to be on? So, Go see the movie, and it's entertaining, you know, at the sort of uh, superficial and psychological level. But I think it's also telling a pretty deep truth about the way God breaks into our lives.